The first hidden Markov model is to calculate the probability of a particular string of observations knowing the parameter of the hidden Markov model. And we discussed uh, two procedures, forward and backward procedure, and they should give you identical results. The second problem is to infer the hidden states. If I have a particular observation, a string uh, coin flip in this case, um, I, I, I would like to ask if I don't uh, know the hidden coins, can I guess what that hidden coin is? So if I have a string of coin flip like this, T, uh, H, T, T, H, 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 T, I would ask, what is the probability the first coin is fair coin, second coin is fair coin, and so on. And, um, and the solution to this, also there are two different solutions. The first is called a forward backward procedure. And so basically, you, you run the forward procedure first, and you get all the alpha numbers in here. Um, remember what the, the alpha numbers mean. They tell us the probability of seeing this coin, of using this coin, in order to see all the flips now and before. So at this coin, you know, like at this location, I'm seeing a T. Um, what's the probability I'm using a fair coin now in order to see this tail and all the flips before? Um, so that's your, you calculate all the alpha numbers here. And then we also run the, the, the backward procedure to calculate the beta numbers and remember what the beta numbers mean, which is the probability of using this coin in order to see everything after, all the flips after. And so beta 3f is, what's the probability that I can use a fair coin now in order to see h, 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 t, the things after that, right? Whereas um, the alpha 3t is the, what's the probability of, um, the, of using a fair coin in order to see t and before that t and h. And so we run the forward procedure, we run the back forward procedure, we'll fill this matrix then we can calculate this probability. Um, the probability at, at this position of using a fair coin um, is basically um, alpha three times beta three in order to get this whole thing. Because if I'm using a fair coin, um, the alpha three tell me if I use fair coin, I will see everything before. And the, the beta three tell me if I use a fair coin, these are the probability of seeing everything after. Therefore, when you multiply these two numbers together, that's the probability. The third coin being a fair coin in order to see the whole thing. And so you are using the whole chain to help you make the best guess of what's happening at this third location. And uh, that is just the probability, but you have to sum over all your other options. And what are the other options at this location? You can either use a fair coin or you can use a bias coin. The chance that the, the, the probability of at this location of to, to get a fair coin is the alpha three fair times the beta three fair at this location. But what if I'm using a bias coin at this location? Um, that's your alpha three using bias coin and the beta three using bias coin. So that's the probability. Um, and so you sum these two together as your denominator and, uh, and this, this is your numerator. And this is the final probability, um, 0.659. And at this point, whichever uh, probability is larger than 50%, that's the probability you assign to the, by that particular coin. Um, so, in, in this case, um, because the fair coin probability is 0.659, we'll say, oh, the third position is a fair coin. But not only you are given a prediction, you are given a confidence of the prediction. So at some positions, you might be 99% sure that this is a fair coin. But at other locations, you're only 0.51%, sorry, only 51% sure. So you, you have a confidence at every location as well. Um, and so the forward to backward procedure can maximize 
the expected number of correctly predicted states um, throughout a coin flip. So imagine if you have a very, very long string of coin flip at every location, you use all the information before and all the information after, you know, all the coin flips after and all the coin flips before in order to make your best guess of what's, what's the coin that's used at this location. And if you use the forward backward pr uh, procedure, it will maximize your expected number of states um, at every coin flip that's correctly predicted. And so that's one solution to the second problem.